Hello, in this video we are going to cover the UI list view. The UI list view is basically a view that allows you to contain other UI elements which the user can scroll through. They are ordered sequentially as basically if you add item 1 then item 2, item 2 will appear directly after item 1. So that's basically what a UI list view is. Before you start this tutorial you want to make sure that you've got a project set up and that you've got your project set up so it uses the UI plugin within Cocos 2DX C++. If you haven't, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description to a video tutorial, so check that out. Once you're all done with that, we can start programming our list view. So UI list view, I'm just going to call mine list view equals UI list view create and now what we're going to do is set the list view scroll direction so set direction and this takes UI scroll view direction no, not draw direction and so we got both horizontal, nine and vertical. We're just going to choose vertical. As an extra task, just check out the different ones, but they're pretty self-explanatory. List view set clipping enabled. We're going to set this to false because if it's true, it does not appear. List view set position vector, and we're just going to center it. So visible size dot width divided by 2 plus origin dot x visible size dot height divided by 2 plus origin dot y and now what we can do is this add child list view push back custom no no sorry just list view and we've actually set up our list view now and it's been added to our scene but the thing is it's got nothing inside it so you won't be able to see anything so let's just add some items and to make it easy to show in this video I'm just gonna have a for loop which will display 100 buttons obviously you can have other UI items but this is just to show you an extreme scenario where you have a whole heap of items so what we're going to do is ui button i'm going to call this one button equals ui button create and i've got the images already in my resources folder The last thing to do is just add the item to our list view. So we do push back custom item button. Now let's just run this in our simulator and we'll have a list view with 100 button items that we can scroll through. So there we go, we got our list view. So if we just keep scrolling, it takes a little while because well, we got a hundred items. Obviously, any of these UI items that you put in there will have their own properties. Obviously, a button you could add an event listener, um, and by doing that, you could detect when the button has been pressed. But what you can also do is add an event listener for the list view, and that will allow you to detect what particular item in the list view has been selected and interacted with we'll show you how to implement that right now so if we go to our scene or hello world scene dot h void selected item event you can name this whatever you want ref asterisk sender ui list view colon colon event type and this is gonna give me an error right here and that's because I don't have any of this inside this so let's just copy and paste this inside here and there we go our error has disappeared 
So now let's just implement this method. So let's copy and paste it to save some time. Hello world colon colon. And in here, what we're going to do first of all is do UI list view asterisk list view. It's going to create a local list view, and this is basically going to be the list view that we created here and we can cast it via the sender because sender is essentially the item that this event was called from so if we do static cast and the type will be UI list view asterisk and the expression is basically what we want to cast which is sender now what we're going to do is do a switch case. We're going to switch on type, which is the event type. And there are two events. There's case UI list view event type on selected item end. So basically once you select a particular item, once your this case will be called once the user stopped interacting with it. Break case UI list view event type on selected item start and we can just put a default case as well always good practice to do so so what we're going to do is just do a log and inside the log we're going to put select it child end index equals list view get current selected index so basically this gets the current selected index of the item that you've just pressed so if you have four items and you press the first item the current selected index will be zero as you'll see in a moment I'm gonna copy and paste this for the starting method but instead of saying end I'm going to put start index and now finally the only thing we need to do now is attach this event listener to our list view so add event listener and in here we do cc underscore callback to hello world selected item event common this there we go and now if we run this in our simulator what we'll get is a list view as we had before it'll visually look no different but watch what happens when I click one of the items it says Selected child start index equals two. Let go, it says ended equals two. And if I were to do for the first one, zero, zero. So this is a great way of just detecting which item has been pressed in terms of just a particular number. So the final thing I'm gonna show you is how to add UI items that are generally not interactable and the best way to do is to actually show you the UI image view we got a separate video on this so check that out if you want more information on the UI image view so let's just quickly construct this image view colon colon create hello world.png so I'm just gonna add this to the list view push back custom item image view and I put an L instead of the semicolon so once this runs we'll get a image view which will have the hello world image at the start there we go but I can't drag look I can't move it at all but if I try and move it from the button it works fine and even if and when I click it it doesn't do anything with the start and end index logs and the reason is the image view generally you wouldn't interact with it because it's just 
designed to display a static image and any other UI item that is like that that generally the user shouldn't be able to interact with you can allow them to interact with it with limited uh, features but you can and the way to do that is simply do image view set touch enabled put this to true this is just something to bear in mind when you do use UI items that you can't generally interact with. So now, look, I, not only can I scroll from it, I can actually touch it and it prints out the logs. So that's it for the UI list view. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on sonarlearning.co.uk for slash questions.php. Don't worry, there'll be a link in the description to our education platform. If you Oh, sorry, I already told you about that. Please rate and subscribe. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.